What you see here is a Dungeon Master screen made from Hearst Arts molds. It consists of three separate panels that can also be used as a shelf display when not being used as a Dungeon Master screen. The scale of these buildings is 1 to 285, also known as 6 mm scale. These are made from individual building blocks which you can rearrange to create a large variety of ancient cities. For those of you not familiar with the process, I make and sell silicone rubber molds which you can pour in plaster of Paris, dental stone, or plastic resin. After you scrape off the top, 25 minutes later, you can pop out finished blocks to build with. You can find complete casting and building instructions on my website listed below. Now I want to give you some idea what the scale of these buildings are. Uh, the miniatures I have here are 1 to 285 or 6 millimeter scale and you can see from this this is actually the size that a truck would be here. Uh, this here is a uh, 6 millimeter tank so this is what the size of a tank would be. Now here what I have is actually a miniature of a soldier and uh, this kind of compares it to what the size would be. Let me see if I can zoom in and if it will focus you can kind of see this is a uh, six millimeter figure so it kind of gives you the idea of the size now I wanted to show miniatures from other games you could possibly use with this uh, these are CAV miniatures from Reaper miniatures Battletech miniatures are the same scale maybe slightly smaller so you kind of get a good idea of the scale compared to the size of the castle wall and the size of the arches another one that you could possibly do uh, this is a TIE fighter from Star Wars miniatures so the Star Wars ship actually aren't too bad as far as a scale if you have a city you want to fly around or do a battle of, on some world that way. Another miniature game that you probably can't find too much but I thought the, the uh, theme worked really well. These are from WizKids and this is from the Crimson Skies game. Now I'm going to cover some basic information about these three building molds. This is mold number 370, which is the castle cube bases. This is mold number 371, which are the castle cube tops. And this is mold number 372, which are the castle cube walls. Now the pieces on this mold are actually basically three quarters of an inch square. Three quarters by three quarters, they're five eighths of an inch tall, which means they're slightly shorter than they are wide. Now my main purpose for making these molds was to create a castle building game that I had in mind. So what you can do is you can glue these together and just kind of think of them as three-dimensional Tetris. You can just take and stack these together. Uh, if you don't have a game in mind or a particular building that you want to build, you could just cast up blocks of these for the grandkids to build with. These blocks actually have good details on the inside too, so if I can get this to focus, you can actually see that there are pillars here and there's actually kind of a stone design underneath. And if you wanted to make ruins, you could actually take a pair of pliers and break these apart and actually create a ruined building that you can kind of see the interior from if you wanted. Now this is mold number 371 which are the uh, uh, castle cube tops and I'm going to give you a few strategies on how to use this. First of all if you kind of divide these pieces up you'll notice we have three pieces that are taller than the rest. These are 5 eighths of an inch high to the floor. The next we have some blocks that aren't quite as tall. These are 3 eighths of an inch to the floor. And then I have some blocks here that actually have a very low floor. They're actually 1 eighth inch of a floor. The final pieces we have are the things that go on top of the towers. Now there are a variety of shapes, but they're, they are all within 1 8 inch increments. So what you can do is you can kind of start with the tower tops, and you'll find that some of these, like this one right here, you can actually fit the uh, little top pieces directly into it. That will fit directly into it. This one right here is the exact size to drop in directly into it. Uh, this one right here will fit right into the middle of it like there. And then some of these small houses will also uh, kind of fit on it here. Now I also have kind of an interesting transition piece that goes from this same height up here at the top and then you can kind of put one of these uh, that go down to a different level. So in other words if I can kind of squeeze these together what you can do is you can top this here and you can actually put another another piece that kind of goes up here and at the edge of it here where this goes down in you can actually fit a building kind of against it right here so that it actually drops down to a different level and then you can fill in with other little buildings and other little pieces kind of like that to just fill in a random assortment of roofs and uh, other things that kind of fit in here. 
Now as far as these second level pieces, you've got a few different kinds. You've got some that have kind of a corner crenellation, you've got some that are a strip where they're open on both ends, and you've got one that's kind of a dead end. So you can kind of take different combinations. The one that has the corner around, you can put the corner all the way around onto three sides. And then if you use a basic building block here, and you cap it off with something else here, you can have a tower up here and then fill in the remainder in here with some other little buildings that uh, you think are going to kind of fit uh, going around. Uh, something like that. And then you could cap this one off. This little piece right here is kind of a nice one because it's at the same level as these. So you can just simply butt it up against there and it has no crenellation edge at all. So any building you have just kind of is exposed like on the edge of a cliff. Now the lower level uh, buildings can all be rearranged. You see they kind of go together. You can put this one here and you can put the end on it here. And this one's kind of a corner piece that can go here. And then this one kind of fills in here. Usually this one uh, usually looks better when you put it on top of another one so it kind of sticks up like that. One more piece that I wanted to mention is this bridge piece. Uh, this bridge piece is meant usually to go together for two, so what you can do is you can use this bridge in a couple of ways. One way is to actually glue it between uh, two of these uh, uh, regular top squares here, and you've got this whole range in between here that you can fill with little buildings. You could put a, uh, a little building here, and then you could put a larger one here. You could leave a gap for this little building right here. And then, of course, you could, you know, put a house or something like it on the end and just kind of fill across with buildings going across the bridge. And, of course, you know, once you get the bridge glued, you can take it and set it on top of the basic building blocks and make a bridge basically as high as you like it. Another way to do the bridge, which is kind of an interesting way, is to make the bridge so that the top lines up here. And what I've got is on one side I've got a basic building block and a basic building block. So these can go on top just like this and so the whole top is straight across the same uh, uh, same building size as everything else. So I could take a, a basic building block on top of this and uh, I could put another one on top of here and I could build another one on top of here and this would continue to climb up as high as you want so that a building actually has a recess arch going down into a mass of buildings. And then of course on top of that you could cap this off with what other, uh, uh, what other buildings and pieces you would like. And see if I can put that one there, I could put this little piece down here, and then across the top of course I could put this one here. And uh, where's my other little one there? I could put the other one down like this. So you can kind of cap off the top way up above if you like. And then, of course, you know, cap them off with what other buildings you think would, uh, would look kind of nice to work all together for that. Now, the final mold is number 372, which is the Castle Cube wall mold. And what I'm going to do is tell you how to assemble the towers. And uh, when you get done, the castle walls will look something like this when you get them done here. Now let me show you how these blocks go together. You'll notice that some blocks have recessed holes and some have bumps. So the ones that go kind of an angle across the corner, that's a corner tower. So what you do is you simply just put these two together and there's only one way that they'll mesh together. And these two are a straight tower when the uh, bumps go kind of in a straight direction. These two will go on top of each other to form a straight tower. The castle walls, which are these two pieces, basically just butt together like this to make a complete castle wall. And then once you get the towers assembled, we have the tower tops that go on top of both of the towers. Now I do want you to notice there's a difference between the straight towers and the corner towers. Corner towers, actually, you can see there's two adjacent sides that have this overhang on them. And the back two adjacent sides are both completely flat to give you a good gluing surface. The straight towers are flat on one side, flat on the opposite side, and then the other two sides are an overhang. So uh, this is meant for the center of a wall. In other words, this straight tower is meant to have a wall on one side and also a wall on the other side where it meets flat like that. So it forms the center of the wall. This mold will allow you in one casting to make three of these central towers or these straight towers. On the mold you'll only get one of the corners because you need fewer corners than you need the straights. The corner tower against the two flat sides you'd have a wall that goes here and a wall that goes against the side there and it will glue really nice uh, for the corner that way. 
Now as you can see the Dungeon Master screen uses a combination of all of these styles of blocks in order to create it. We have a castle wall on the front, we have built up walls behind using the basic blocks like this, and then of course we have uh, different areas like the bridges and other things that go across and the little buildings on the top. This concludes the introduction video. Feel free to send me an email if you have other creative ideas that you think these molds could be used for.